Right. Hello, everyone. I'm Dylan. Hey, guys. I'm Sahil, and we are uh, two of the workshop chairs this year for HKN. And today, we're going to be doing a workshop on how to read Python documentation online and how to use it to your benefit. And we'll also be going over solving a small um, algorithm and how we can use the documentation online to our uh, benefit. All right, so why even read documentation? Well, the reason behind this is Python and a lot of other languages come with a lot of built-in libraries. And it can be really difficult to remember the APIs of these uh, functions, what you input into them and what they give you back. Um, so it's a good reference you can also refer back to. Also, there's a lot to learn about the language through the documentation. So really quickly, we'll just go through the Python documentation. As you can see here, there's a lot of different things you can learn, um, including a tutorial, as we want. Um, for now, we'll go through the language reference. Really quickly. If you look you at the language it. references here, uh, there, it, basically the idea with documentation is that there's so many different uh, syntaxes for different types of statements, like uh, if, while, for, like there's so many different types of syntaxes you can have. So it's a pain to me memorize or keep track of all of them. So the idea with this documentation online is to, it basically gives you uh, for each type of syntax, what kind of input arguments the expression will be expecting and the type of, uh, and the data type or the, kind of output that that certain function will give. So for example, if we look at the if statement at the top, uh, it says, okay, so the if statement syntax here is that if, and then you need a conditional statement. And if that statement is true, then you will get the certain output, which is de denoted by this uh, suit there. And then the else defines the condition where the uh, condition in the if is not true. And then in that case, you have another, like you have another set of commands that you give. So that's basic, uh, that's just an example. While the while statement, for example, over there shows that while means you, the expression is, uh, the loop keeps on running as long as the expression evaluated in the uh, while, while loop, like as long as that expression is true, the while loop keeps on running. Uh, the moment that expression doesn't hold true, it breaks out of the loop. Uh, for loops, for example, give you a range, uh, like a def set, defined set of range over which to run, like a defined set of iterations over which you run the loop. And um, basically the commands inside there, to, uh, those set of commands will be executed for every single iteration of the loop. So it's just an example of how the syntax, uh, basically the idea with this documentation is that it gives you the syntax for how to use it in Python and what arguments the statement is expecting and what kind of output it will give you. I'm just going to be generating random numbers and random numbers and then sorting them in and uh, printing them out to the user. So now Dylan's going to show you how you can read the documentation for HeapQ specifically uh, and how that will help us solve this problem. So for this problem, we're going to need three things. Um, and then we're going to need the render function, uh, the heap queue, so I'll say, and the math module. So yeah, go through the heap queue. Um, this is basically a priority queue, um, a min heap specifically, and it can be really tricky, the syntax, so it's always good to look at the documentation before you step into anything. As you can see here, um, you have to import heap queue, and then these are the functions that are available to you. And you can see here, you keep push, and you're actually putting the heap as one of the arguments, and then the item that you're inputting. Um, heap pop, and then your only argument is the heap. Um, and it'll it gives it just a little description of what this will be doing. And as you can see, there are a lot of different functions for this um, library, but the only two we're going to be really concerned with are heap push and heap pop. Similarly, for random numbers, for generating the random numbers, we're going to be using the random module. Uh, as you can see, you just use import random, and you can seed it, actually, and then 
we're going to be most concerned with um, dot random. Random dot random just returns a random one point value in the range zero to one. And by multiplying this value, uh, we can extend its range to whatever we would like. Uh, and then also, because we're going to get random integers, um, we're going to want to use a ceiling function to um, round up all the numbers that we get. And here in the math module, there are a ton of different cool functions that you can use. Um, there's common divisor here, and a bunch of different other ones. But the one we're going to be concerned with is not that seal, which just returns a ceiling max, the smallest integer greater than or equal to x. You can see the syntax for this. And yeah, now I think we're ready to jump in. It's one point heq. And when you say as hq, you're giving it sort of an alias. Um, so instead of having to type that heap q dot the function, you can just type hq instead. So importing math um, and importing random. So first we need to generate the random numbers and put them into heap q. So for heap q, we need to define a list. Um, just to clarify on what he's doing he's done on the top is <clears throat> we the uh, libraries that he went over at this, uh, in his browser were heap q random and math and we need those three to solve this problem so in order to do that we need to import these library packages from the python library and that'll help us to solve the problem so that's what we've done at the top and now we're defining the largest and function which we will eventually call to test our program. Yeah, so here we have a for loop. Uh, we're going to go, want to run this in time. And what we'll do is we'll get a number, g will fire up random. This will give us a number between zero and one. And then we're going to want to. Back on to here just to make sure we know syntax. We do heap q dot heap push, then the heap and item. So heap here is going to be the heap. So then we're going to push it on to it, the ceiling of somewhere. We're going to do it from zero to 100. So yeah, we're pushing onto this min heap this random number, um, which is in the range of 1 to 100. And then to print it out, loop through the um, heap you n times, and then we're going to print. Uh, and we'll get the number back. That's going to be the smallest number in heap is uh, ordered. Uh, heap keeps the smallest number on the top. The smallest number, I will shift that to the square. Um, and then if you want to test this function, you could do large sign. Do it for five numbers initially. See it. We have five random numbers between zero, between one and hundred, and they ordered from small to large. We try again. We'll have ten numbers this time. So let's say first. You see, there are ten numbers there. All in order. If you want crazy, you can do fifty numbers. Yeah, see here we have a few different numbers all ordered from the smallest to largest. So yeah, that's for function. Um, just on this for reading Python documentation.
for the standard libraries. Thanks for watching. We hope this was helpful and thanks yeah. for watching and please reach out to us if you have any questions.